Dear student, this is the first uh, mini lecture in the module circulation and this lecture will be about the effects of gravity on the circulation with special we're going to look in particular I'm going to be describing some specific adaptations, some specific changes present in the giraffe the tallest animal on earth and how they can cope with gravity they definitely defy gravity standing four, the head standing four meters tall basically imposes a particular strain on the cardiovascular system as we will see and that's essentially because blood pressure is a combination of the internal uh, blood pressure in the system plus the gravitational factor. Blood pressure obviously because of that will be higher below the heart because of the gravity effect and lower above it. Even if the central or the, the pressure in the, the circulation is the same because that's the it's related with the resistance to which uh, blood uh, circulates around you will have a combined, you will have the extra added load of gravity and we need to take into account how that works. This effect of gravity basically accounts for 10 millimeters of mercury for every 13 centimeters of heart. That means that you go beyond, below the heart, 13 centimeters, blood pressure will increase by 10 millimeters and the other way going up. And of course this poses important challenges that you can calculate yourself. Now imagine that blood pressure at the level of the heart is 190 millimeters of mercury. This is a high blood pressure by the way but we will see that this is close to the blood pressure in the giraffe. So this is your startup blood pressure. This is what would correspond in a human to the normal blood pressure of 120 over 80 what we call the systolic versus the diastolic. So take 190 and then calculate what would be the corresponding pressure because of gravitational effects alone at the base of the brain. If you know that the, bra the brain, the base of the brain is 150 centimeters above the heart, the corresponding pressure calculating with the factor I provided in the previous slide would be 75 millimeters of mercury. So pressure at the base of the brain just because be just due to gravitational effects alone will be 75 millimeters per mercury instead of 109. If you look at what happens in the feet, two meters below the heart, you could do that calculation and you would yield a pressure of 344 millimeters mercury, a very high pressure. And of course this has consequences. And the consequences are at the level of the brain, brain ischemia, the fact that lower perfusion pressure means reduce blood flow, so the brain is perfused, is less perfused, and at the level of the feet, fluid pooling and edema. And this will constitute the two main topics of this lecture and the next one that uh, will be available on edema, fluid pooling uh, and uh, transcapillary pressures. This is just basically illustrating the same thing. If we talk an adult giraffe, six meters, six meters tall, potential problems due to gravity, brain ischemia because of low pressure at the base of the brain, excessive pressure in the feet, fluid pooling or edema. Obviously, this is a topic that has been of high interest for researchers for many years now. The first measurements in, of the blood pressure in the giraffes were done back in the 1960s and I'm going to be presenting some of these results. These results were done with the technology available at the time uh, which of course allowed them to do quite a few things but not everything that we could do today and I'll show examples of that a bit later. Mm -hmm. Essentially the discovery here is that knowing of the effects of gravity the expectation is that if brain ischemia has to be presented, has to be prevented, we need a high perfusion pressure. And that would mean that the, the blood pressure of a giraffe 
has to be substantially higher, the central blood pressure has to be substantially higher in order to feed the brain with blood. And the first, the first measurements done in the giraffe basically illustrated these. These were done in anesthetized giraffes, in laying positions, or then elevating the, the head, therefore, therefore imposing gravitational effects. And what you see very clearly is that blood pressure is relatively high, and it even increases further uh, when the head is elevated. These numbers are considerably higher than what would be, cons would be normal for most mammalian species. When these measurements in a later study, 1966, as you see here, were done in living giraffes, or actually in giraffes that were uh, just running around, pressures in the range of 192, this would be the, the systolic pressure, diastolic pressure, when the animals are standing, simply standing, or walking, or galloping, you see how blood pressures increase, or in the case of walking, they, they decrease slightly. The combined effect is that giraffes have a high blood pressure. Giraffes have a blood pressure that would be lethal for a human being. So, of course, that raises the question, why are, how can giraffes cope with a pressure that would kill a man? Why are giraffes hypertensive? And there are two explanations for it. The first explanation is the concept of adaptive or physiological hypertension that is connected to what I just said. The fact that aortic pressure has to be high to supply blood to the brain. Other researchers have thought different, and I'll, I'll, you'll see it in a second why. Essentially, their hypothesis has to do with other reasons because they consider that gravity has imposes no extra load on the hearts. This is a little bit of more of a, a complex argument that I hope that you can follow in the next slides. But the main point with the second hypothesis is that in this case there are other reasons why giraffes are hypertensive. Because the consideration in this hypothesis is that gravity does not impose an extra load on the heart. The heart does not work harder to pump blood at the level of the brain. And you are going to ask, how so? Well, essentially, this was formulated already in 1972 by Burton by saying that it is no harder in the circulation for the blood to flow uphill than downhill. And this main idea is basically based on the concept of the existence of a siphon. In the closed circulatory system, everyone knows, we know that uh, in most vertebrates, or in vertebrates essentially, we have a closed circulatory system. A siphon mechanism they propose exists. So there is no extra effort in pumping the blood upwards. And this is something that will be familiar to many. This is a siphon. This is the effect by which filling a closed system with a fluid basically means that there is no extra effort in pumping the blood up from this beaker because in the way down there is a pooling effect, the siphon effect. So the big consideration here, is this actually true? If this is true, can it be so that it does not cost, there is no extra effort for the heart to pump blood to the brain? If that is so, why are giraffes hypertensive? The question then is, does the heart work against gravity? And this question in, in itself alone has generated a lot of debate in the scientific literature. Has generated a lot of debate, but basically because not everyone, or actually there is a big division in the people that have believed the presence of the siphon, that the siphon exists, while many others have said that it's not. The debate is not completely settled, but you'll see that there is today one major line of thought to which, which most people agree with, and that seems to be compliant with most of the experimental data that's available. 
This siphon delayed, of course, has nothing to do with the giraffe, but the giraffe triggered it uh, for the fact that it's the animal, the tallest animal on Earth, in which we could see this effect most remarkably. But, of course, the, the, the siphon, if existent, would be present in, anima, in all animals with a close circulation. It would be present in humans as well. The main points of contention here have to do with the role of the jugular vein in this siphon. The jugular vein is the vein that returns blood from the head to the heart. That would be the down part of the siphon. And if this jugular vein collapses, because if the, if the vein collapses, the blood vessel collapses, obviously it will prevent blood flow from continuing. And the second aspect of contention has to do with the fact that up in the brain, blood has to be distributed through very, very small capillary networks, and that could have what's called a baffling effect. Mm -hmm. All in all, the main problem for this debate has been the lack of experimental data. Uh, researchers have put together lots of experimental models based on tubes and hoses, but the real experiments on animals in proper conditions have not been done, or had not been done other than some small experiments. In the last few years, the last decade, a group of Danish researchers led by Tobias Wang from the University of Aarhus wanted, decided to try to settle that debate, and they organized at least a couple of expeditions to South Africa in order to study the giraffe circulation. Their studies are not fully published yet, their studies contain some interesting data, which I'm going to be presenting, uh, just, just a, a, a glimpse of it in the next few slides. But of course, this is cumbersome work, this is work that is, is, is heavy, it requires manipulating an animal that is several uh, hundreds of kilos in weight, and it's delicate at the same time. Here we have the team basically working on an anesthetized, an anesthetized giraffe. This is a publication from 2009. And we, they did the measurements that I'm going to be showing you uh, in a second. And these measurements had to do with studying the pressures in the circulation towards anti, uh, from, um, from the brain and following up on what sort of pressures are seen there, if these pressures, if these levels are compatible with the siphon effect or not, and answering the question, can we say if it's true that it's no harder to pump blood uphill than downhill? You see, basically, these experiments were done, at least from this paper, in anesthetized giraffes. In later work, they actually have worked with in vivo data. Little is published yet. But you see here the researchers basically managing to, on an anesthetized giraffe, have it standing or have it laying down, as in the previous slide, and then raising the neck up or down to look at what happens uh, in the circulation when that is done. Notice that these are anesthetized animals. In anesthetized animals, uh, things are slightly different than what it would be in vivo. So, of course, the measurements done in these type of preparations have to be interpreted in the light of the actual situation of the animal in anesthesia. But looking at these effects on the heart using ultrasound to monitor the size of the blood vessels in the neck, what this study basically was able to provide evidence for is that in the upright position, when the animal, when the giraffe has the neck high up, the jugular vein is importantly collapsed, but not fully collapsed. What you see for comparison, this is the carotid artery, the main blood supply to the, to the head, the brain, and this is the jugular in the upright position. When the heart, sorry, when the head in this animal was lowered, see basically what happens, the carotid artery remains more or less the same size, the jugular vein expands enormously. And this is what this data is trying to show. Basically, in the upright position compared with the uh, head lowered position. A, a very large, a very large expansion in the cross section of the jugular vein, indicating that it was fully open, of course. Does this settle the siphon debate? Well, 
Not really. The siphon uh, defenders will say that there's enough that the vessel is not fully collapsed, that the flow can continue. This same experiment has been done in man, and the same conclusions have been obtained. Mm -hmm. you, what you see here in this slide is, again, a comparison of the carotid artery in the three pictures here with the jugular vein, fully expanded in this picture, much narrower here, disappearing here, in association with a supine, that means laying down, semi-supine, starting to stand up and fully standing. If anything, this data suggests that the siphon might be not so operational because of the collapsing of the jugular vein, but uh, it's a matter of interpretation as well. In connection with these type of studies, both in giraffes and humans, researchers have measured also the profiles, the changes in pressures. Uh, and that's what I'm going to show you in a second. Mm -hmm. In the human data, Basically, the change from the supine to the semi-supine, that means a partly standing position. When this happens, there is a rather large drop in the pressure in the jugular vein. Rather, drop in pressure. The point again is that pressure drops, but it does not go to zero. The siphon. If the siphon was not there, if the siphon could be negated, the expectation would be that pressure went to zero. But that's actually not fully the case. Back pressure drops quite importantly. Same thing is actually happening in the giraffe. These are the profiles, the multiple measurements done in the different animals. Arterial pressure on one side. The effects on the arterial pressure reflect mostly the effects of gravity, but not fully. Uh, but I'm not going to get into those details. The effects in the venous side of the circulation basically point towards the same idea. That in the standing animal, the venous pressure, the pressure in the veins, is close to zero, or even lower, or even negative, at a certain distance from the heart. And again, this is a little bit conflicting data. First of all, you see the largest scatter in the data. You see some, uh, some animals in which pressures were positive, some animals in which was negative. So this is far from proving clearly and undoubtedly if there is a siphon effect on the circulation or not. But nowadays, most people tend to believe that all this data is pointing towards is that it is not true. There is no siphon in the circulation. It costs for the heart to pump blood to the brain, and that would be the explanation of why giraffes have a high blood pressure. Because they need the heart to pump against the column of blood that the gravity generates. There are further challenges ahead, because of course one thing is the picture of how this works in a bit more of a static way as we're seeing here now, but notice that giraffes are not only standing or, or laying animals, they are animals that move around and do lots of different things. One of them, particularly impressive, that has impressed research for many years, and it's still under study, is the ability to take this head from high up, four, five, six meters tall, all the way down to the ground, and be able to drink. And of course, although the animal squats when it does that, basically trying to decrease, in a way, decreasing the distance between the heart to the ground, it's still a rather high feature or a very important in, a, amazing characteristic that they can do this when most other animals with such a gravitational change would faint. The question remains how come giraffes don't faint when they do this, when they go down, when they lower their head for drinking. And this is the subject of future studies and hopefully for a future mini lecture in this module, in this circulation module. That's it for now. Thank you very much.